today I'm going to be starting a, some cable Damascus. We're using half inch cable, steel cable. I'll cut it up, cut pieces of it off like right here, to the, and then I'll tie them together. And most people, most time you see people, they'll take and weld it all together each end and I'm just I do it a little bit different because well just cause I can but once once I get it cut up and I'll tie it together with wire now I probably will go ahead and weld one end of it together just so that I can weld my stick to it I can weld me a stick to it to make it easier to hold on to but I won't weld the other end I'll just leave it tied together with wire and uh, start forge welding it together that way. So, it's a little bit different. A lot of times you hear people say you have to weld it in. It has to be done. Do this, do that, or no. I guess when you're first doing it, first time doing it, yeah, you weld both ends up together, but I've did this a few times now, so, and this is just the way I prefer to do it. seven pieces of it cut out and I'll show you why I've got seven pieces here in just a second so now the, the reason I cut made seven pieces is so that it would come together good see it's got six on the outside and one in the center it makes it tie together good. Now I could just take take these one at a time, and I could forge weld one of the one together. Just because you get to forge weld all the threads together, but I could do them one at a time, make little flat stock, and then stack them all on top of each other, and then do it again and forge weld them all together that way. But that, uh, that takes a little too long for me. This is going to take long enough anyways. So, I've tied it together. And now, on this end, I will go ahead and, and weld this end together. And then, that way I can stick me a stick on this end. But I'll leave that end open like that. And plus, whatever, whatever doesn't work too well, it doesn't stick together good, or... If, if it frays out or whatever, which they're gonna be a little bit. There's always gonna be a little bit to do that. And I just cut that off because I don't you know it's simple enough. So now as you can see, I still haven't welded that end, but I have welded that end up just so I could put that rod on there for a handle. Hold on to it. It makes it easier. Because Honestly, no matter what forge welding you're doing, forge welding is a little dangerous. It can easily start a fire because this forge welding is where the fire flies. Whatever you start putting all that flux on there, covering this up, whatever you go to hammer it, it'll, it really makes it, whenever you, you think of somebody striking hot metal this is what normally comes to mind when you see all the firefly all right so i'm going to get this forge fired up see if i can get get it hot enough to forge weld all this together and 
and uh, once we once I get that done, go ahead and start drawing it out in, into a bar, and then uh, probably a two two part video or so. so. If I don't get a get something made with it in this one, I'll definitely be making something with it in the next video. So I've got I've got the forge fired up now. I'm just gonna put that in there like that and start burning that stuff off of it. Now I've got that in the fire, gotten it heating up because it I'm gonna go ahead and burn it off before I start fluxing it. It's got oil and grease and everything else on it. We'll we'll burn that I'll burn that off first. You may notice I got me a little hood. I'll put a little smaller hood on there. The reason I've done that is help try to hold the heat in there because I want this to get as hot as I can hot as I can get it because the this this coal it, it's it's different coal and uh, I'm just hoping I can get it hot enough to forge well with. You can say it's starting to burn that grease and that oil out of it already. The next thing I'm going to start doing, I've let it sit there and soak in the fire for a little bit. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding flux to it. And all that is is just borax. That'll help keep, that'll keep the oxygen from getting inside there and creating scale. If it creates scale on the inside of it, it ain't good. You have little air pockets possibly. You have occlusions. You open it. You start grinding it away. You find a big hole. The peel back. It, it won't forge well together if you don't keep the air out of it and the heat in. I don't want to get it so hot that it starts creating it scale, so I'm going to go ahead and start giving it the borax. And it also helps pull out other, the rest of the impurities that are still in it. And it's got it covered up real good and put it back in there. I'm going to let it soak even longer this time. Now, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll flux that two or three times before I start working on it. That's what I'm fixing to do is give it flux, it, flux it again. Here, cooking all that out of, out of there. You really, I'm, I'm doing this, but I really shouldn't be doing this, but whatever I'm flexing that, I, I really should have a pair of gloves on. Because this stuff does melt. And it will burn you. And it'll burn you really bad. It's a very painful burn. So if a person does this, make sure you got gloves on. Don't do, don't do as I do. Do as I say. Wear your gloves. Now yeah, that's why I've got that hood on there. Is hold most of that heat in. Because if I don't keep the heat in it, then it won't. I'll never get it hot enough. So now, <clears throat> now this is this cable is looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start tighten it up a little bit more. We're going to put it in the vise and we're going to twist it. Tighten that cable up more. I 
like I said about the end of it, it would mess up, which I ain't really worried about that. Give it a little cap. Yeah, it's a little flux it again. Put it back in there, let it soak. And I'm gonna get the glove out this time, but it's all starting to get hot now. All right, so that's been soaking a little bit longer. And I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit more than after that, we'll start forging on it. When you do it, make sure you're going the right way. I'm gonna heat it up, do that one more time, just just for good measure. All right, let's try this again. See if I can do it the right way this time. Got it pretty tight so far. I think that'd be good enough to start working on it. First start off doing this, since I've got all that flux on there, I do I have put my apron on. It will set me on fire if I don't, if I don't have it on. Hopefully I won't burn the camera up. See all that flux coming off there? I'm just going around trying to make it, make it into like a rectangle. Squared, squared up. Well, it seems to gonna be going pretty good so far. Now remember I said the end of it? See I knew it would do that. And even welding it on the end, you know. You're still going to have to cut your weld off right there because if you don't, it's going to look like like a bird pooped on the end of your blade. Now when I first start out, I, I don't hit it real hard. But the further I go with it, the more I work it, then the harder I, I start hitting it. So far, it's looking pretty good still. Make sure you keep your anvil cleaned off too, because the dirty anvil, it'll, it'll put all that stuff, all the scale back into your blade. Say I'm starting to hit it a little bit harder, a little bit more, and most of that flux is starting to come off of it now. But so far, it looks like it's took a weld pretty good. 
no more whenever it gets closer closer and closer down in it and so now I'm going to start drawing it out piece that flux. That's why I needed my other glove. Yeah, let's turn it this way and start drawing it out. Now this next time, I'm going to start drawing it out to the sides. I'm going to make it wider. Make it wider. Now once I get that end, that other end flattened down a little bit more, I'm going to go ahead and cut the end of it off. Then I'm going to cut my handle off of it and start using my tongs again. <coughs> I just, I've got so used to using tongs that I'm more comfortable using tongs. Because eventually, eventually that weld where you where I've got that stick welded to it, eventually you will get to the point where it will work off. And then you might have a piece of metal take off flying. Piece of hot metal flying. Now I'm going to take it, I'm going to cut this end off like I was saying. I'm going to cut, cut that end off right there. And then I'm going to take, and I'm going to cut this off of it and start using my tongs. Alright, so now I've got, I've got both ends cut. <coughs> and it looks like a solid piece of metal. But now I'm ready to start working on the other piece. Now I do still have a little bit of my old weld right there, but that's all right. Cause I'll come back and I'll I'll cut that off where where that weld is.
Now, now I've got this metal. I've got this flattened out quite a bit, and I'm going to so I'm going to start speeding things up, playing a little music on this anvil now. switch hammers change gears. Yeah, maybe I can't change gears. It doesn't knock doesn't doesn't jar the phone off the stand. Jar the camera off the stand. Get that thing you get back here. Pop this and you come up here. Get that guy back. Stop. No, you need to Hey, see, my dogs have crowded around me, so don't want to be hitting that hot metal with them running around underneath this, but don't want to hurt them. Got me a good piece of flat stock to start a knife with. Yes, here's my piece of flat stock for when I get ready to start making a knife. And I may, uh, once that cools down, I may clean off part of it and dip it in the acid and see what kind of pattern we're getting. And there you can see that. I just cleaned it up just a little bit and etched it just a little bit, just for a little while and you can see the pattern that started coming out in it. Sometimes when I get out when I get out here, that's what I'll do. I'll get out here. I won't necessarily make a knife or really make anything else. I'll make up some flat stock so that whenever I get ready to make a knife, then I've got it there to start with. Say like uh, I had somebody come to me wanting want me to make them a, a Damascus blade. Well, if I've already got me some flat stock out here, got some made up, then really all I got to do is just start shaping up the knife. You know, when you're making something for somebody that's going to be paying you for it, you know, normally. They want it, you know, as fast as soon as they can get it. And you also like to get paid as soon as you can. So, that saves time whenever you go to make it. You don't have to worry about the 
you know, somebody comes up and says, how you want this, then you have to get out there and start making up your Damascus, and and uh, then while you're making it, then something messes up on it, and then you got to start over again. So, on your spare time, free time, and whatnot, just make up some, that's what I'll do, I'll make up some flat stock, whether it's Damascus flat stock or another piece of metal that I'm just drawing out. That way I've got it ready and I've already went through the process of did it mess up or not mess up and, I, and all I gotta do is just make the knife. So it just helps speed things up for you and your, and your customer if you're selling them.